What's up, y'all? Still out here at the range, as you can see behind me. Getting really overcast out here. The sun's behind the clouds, and it's getting a little windy, so it's getting cold out here, but I'm going to power through it and get a few more tests done out here. As you can see by the title, we're headed back to 9 millimeter again, and what we're doing here, as you can see, the contraption set up, the chrono, two blocks of gel. Now, this last block down here is pretty full of stuff, but the front one up here is completely clear, except for one that poked through on the last test. I'll leave some links for those tests if y'all hadn't seen them, uh, but what we're doing this time we're working with some hot mama nine millimeters we're gonna work with these underwoods plus p pluses 115 grain jacketed hollow point 1400 feet per second is what the box is claiming on these now of course we won't reach that to, out of what i'm using i'm sure but that's what we got plus p plus 115 grain 1400 feet per second and what we're putting them up against is the grizzly nine millimeter plus p 115 grain or jacketed hollow point now these call for 1350 so even though this is plus p and this is plus p plus pretty comparable speeds on what they're calling for and like i say out of what we're using today which is the p365 with the three inch barrel we ain't gonna see either one of them i suspect but it'd be nice to see those are close to it at least anyway so yeah like i say the p365 now this is my actual everyday carry right here i carry this thing from the time i get up to the time i go to bed so this is my actual actual tool that i use every single day for self-defense so we're gonna run them out of this thing with the three inch barrel this seems to be about the most requested barrel barrel size from most of y'all so i figure we'll do we'll, we'll start doing more than with the three inch barrel but i expect some good speeds out of these things for sure so we'll see what happens let me get everything set up and we'll get started all right y'all here we go we're gonna get some speeds on these things as always they're gonna start out with the underwood plus p pluses first see how close we can get to that advertised 1400 feet per second we'll do a three round average on them so here we go Twelve seventy four. I got an error. Twelve fifty three. Let me get one more round. And twelve eighty three. These are definitely some hot mamas. You can tell it's a snappy thing, but plenty manageable. But you can tell there's some power behind those things. Let's check out that three round average. All right, so the three round average on the Underwood plus P pluses are 1,270 feet per second. So definitely not the 1,400, but out of, a, out of a three inch barrel, 1,270 ain't no slouch. So we'll take it. Let me get this reset and let's check out them Grizzlies. All right, let's check out these Grizzlies. These were, like I say, box on these is claiming 1,350. Again, I don't expect to see that, but I'd like to get close to it. Uh, I did notice these projectiles are definitely a little bit different shape. So it ought to be interesting when we get to the jail. But let me get three rounds on these Grizzlies right quick. 1273, 1261, and 1272. So it looks like it's close to the same. Let's check out three round average. All right, so the three round average on the Grizzlies was 1268 feet per second. And if you remember on them Underwoods, it was 1270 so two feet per second difference virtually exactly the same speed out of these things so this ought to be a really interesting test this will this will kind of show which which projectile whichever ones they're using which one is probably the better choice so let me get this all set up y'all know what time it is all right y'all it's hot mama jelly time we start now with the underwood plus p plus i'm not sure what kind of projectiles is in either one of these loads uh, i did notice that the grizzly has sig head stamped brass on it so take that for whatever it's worth but anyway let's start out with this underwood see what she does in the jelly y'all 1250. all right that's way left that i wanted it but we can work with that let's go down there and see what happened All right, from what I can see down there so far, it definitely expanded and it looks like it tore apart. Uh, I, I'm just not sure how I feel about plus P in this light of a load, but we'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, for now, let's check out these Grizzlies. I don't know if I mentioned in the intro, but these Grizzlies were sent to me by Wesley. So Wesley, I really appreciate that, brother. He sent me these with a couple of different other things. I actually get around to testing all this stuff everybody sends me. It just might take me a minute, but we get into them now. So Wesley, thank you for that. Uh, but anyway, let's try these Grizzlies. I'm gonna try to put this thing above and to the right i'm probably pressing my luck i might go out but we'll take another one if i do here we go y'all ah 
I put that, I think, almost in the exact same hole as the underwood, a little bit above it. Let's go down there and see if we can use that. All right, y'all, that one's actually good enough for our testing purposes, but I'm gonna take another shot at it just because I want y'all to be able to see the independent wound channels more clearly. I can see them, they're, they're completely got their own independent wound channels and I can see them good enough here, but it's gonna be tough to show it on the camera. So we'll try to get another one up and to the right of it. All right, that one was much better. It went up above it. So let's go down there and check those out. All right, y'all, let's check out what we got here. A little bit of a, it's gonna be a little bit tricky for y'all to see the underwood uh, past this first grizzly that we took, but I'll, I'll give y'all some different angles and you can you can pretty much make it out good enough for, for our purposes here. But the very top one there, that's that grizzly, the second one we took. This one right here is the first grizzly. The one in the back is the underwood. So the underwood is actually behind this other grizzly. Like I say, I'll give y'all some different angles, but I can just tell you from here and, and you might be able to tell once I swivel you around here. The wound channels are almost exactly the same. Uh, they both shed some material because they're moving so fast. It broke them up as they went in. Now they expanded uh, fantastic. Um, penetration you know it is what it is on the penetration this is about what we're seeing on all the tests i've run today with nine millimeters around in this 12 to 13 ish and a half 14 area like that um is that enough i don't know like this this plus p ammo the problem with it in these lighter rounds that i've seen is it's moving so fast as soon as it enters it expands like crazy and starts shedding material and, and spinning around sideways and it's opened up so fast and dump so much initial energy that it doesn't penetrate quite as far as some of the other ones now is that a bad thing not necessarily in my opinion but is the extra snappiness and recoil and flash and everything is it is that worth what you're getting here from it versus a non plus p i don't know y'all have to leave me y'all's opinion on that in the comments but let me give y'all a couple different little views right quick and then we'll get to penetration on these things it's going to be difficult to tell from any angles of course you can see the top one from the first angle we were at the top top one is that second grizzly we took you see it there um if i come in over here i don't know how well that bottom one is the underwood the piece that curves up and it's in the front down on the bottom it's going to be really difficult though still you can see they had their own separate wound channels before i took that second grizzly shot you could tell a little better but i think you can tell by the way the feathers on the bottom you can kind of estimate that wound channel size on that underwood but just just take my word for it that they're almost identical there's very very little difference in the size of the initial wound channels or how far the wound channels carry out you can see how how they kind of stop right about there all right so for the penetration the underwood which is in the front over there basically in the middle from what y'all looking at right here it went 11 and a quarter inches rebounded back to about 10 and three quarters so 11 and a quarter inches of forward momentum out of the underwood the first grizzly looking at 11 and three quarters of an inch forward momentum the last grizzly looking at about uh 13 and almost a half on that on that last grizzly so it got the most penetration out of all of them that second grizzly we took all right y'all let's get some of that sweet projectile data so over here on the right both of these are the grizzlies you can see some mangled up rounds they definitely expanded without a doubt expanded peeled all the way back left a couple of uh, pieces behind for sure same with the underwood expanded like crazy mangled all up and it left just visually it looks like the underwood shed a lot Lot more of its mass than these grizzlies did but we'll definitely get a weight and check it for sure all right so the underwood started out at 115 of course and it's down to 93.2 93.2 so it shed right much I, I i thought it did i could tell there's a lot of shrapnel and it looks pretty small now the grizzlies the first one 112.8 the second one 
So 112.8 and 111.4. So they definitely retained a pretty good bit more of material over that underwood. All right, let's check out the sizes on these things. This is going to be really inconsistent because they're definitely not symmetrical whatsoever. So 0.55, that seems like the longest way. 0.47 on the short way. 0.58. So like I say, very inconsistent because it's not symmetrical at all. So, but about the, the biggest part was what, 0.58? Yeah, about 0.58 on the biggest part of that underwood. Now the Grizzlies, they're about the same, I think. Let's see what we got. We got 0.576. So same thing with this one, not symmetrical at all. 0 0.56, 0 0.60. So uh, honestly, probably in the average of them, they're about the same size. Let's get this other Grizzly. 0.58, 0.57. 0 0.5, 0 0.61 on that one. That's a big part where the pedal is. So I would say an average of these grizzlies and underwoods as far as the size of the projectile, about the same as far as the physical size, but like we saw, the, the underwood shed a whole lot more mass than these for sure. But there's no doubt you can see the effect of the plus P loadings on these. They just absolutely mangled. I mean, all the pieces expanded, peeled back, just almost melted looking and just a mangled mess of a projectile. All right, y'all, another hot jelly test in the books. This was pretty interesting with these plus P plus and the plus P's. Um, both of them did what they claimed. They gave you the velocity. They gave you the performance there. Um, expansion was, I mean, out of this world. It basically melted the projectile. Now, it did shed a lot of weight. A lot of people don't like that. They want it to retain the mass all the way through. Uh, I, I think that's a toss up for me either way because it obviously dumped a pile of energy when it went in this gel. I don't even have to wait to see the replay to know that it dumped a pile of energy. Now, the question I would have is, is this plus P loading necessary to get the results like you saw here? Uh, and from what I've seen, I really don't think it is because if you've seen the video before this one, uh, you should have seen it. It, it should have been the V-Crown one, a nine millimeter V-Crown. So if you've seen that video, those things performed really excellent in my opinion, and it was way less snap to it, way less recoil, way less flash, because I don't know if it came through in camera while I was doing these tests, uh, but as I was doing the speeds and, and even the jelly on this, I could see the flash from this, and normally I can't really pick up the flash when I'm doing these tests, but I could see it on these both of these loads here. I could see the flash, especially the underwood. So I guess my thinking is if you can get these results this the same or very very similar and, and have the added benefit of, of less recoil, less flash, just, just less violence on the giving end of these rounds. I mean, I, wouldn't you rather have that? I don't know. Y'all let me know down in the comments what y'all's thoughts are. But if you enjoy the video as always, make sure you hit that thumbs up, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification icon down below so you can get notified when I upload new videos. Check my Amazon storefront affiliate link down in the description like I always ask. I'm not asking you to go out of your way and start shopping on Amazon, but if you do it anyway, hit that link up first. It takes you right through Amazon from there like normal. Don't look any different. Don't act any different. No extra money, no extra time. But anything you buy anywhere on Amazon after going through that link first, we get a kickback from Amazon towards the channel. So I really appreciate that. Appreciate all my Range Gang members who reached out and hit that join button. That does help out the channel. I really thank y'all for that. Thank you to each and every single one of y'all who watches all my videos. Thumbs up, subscribe, and leave me comments down below. What do you think about these rounds? Do you carry plus P rounds? Would you rather have plus P? Would you rather have just a standard load? Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are. I'm going to try to knock out a few more tests while I'm still out here and got a little bit of daylight before it gets too cold and windy out here. So make sure y'all stay tuned for that. In the meantime, stay safe, stay prepared and I'll see you soon.